So, um, what does all that mean? Well, it means we need better protection. And in fact, if you work uh, in the mili military or if you've probably read the papers here lately, you know that we actually in the United States have a cyber command. And so for years, our military was based around, of course, air, land, sea, uh, space, uh, and now we've named uh, the d cyber domain as that next war front. Right? And think about that. Very subtle, very stealthy, uh, very non-kinetic. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll read a quote from uh, General Alexander. It says, we operate in a dynamic and contested domain that literally changes its characteristics each time someone powers on a network device. So think about that. You know, you're in your castle and you're laying down, you know, your strategy and what is, you know, the adversary going to do and how am I going to counter. And guess what? It changes. So what? Right? If it's a military move, you know, you can kind of see them shifting their tanks to the left or, you know, everybody with an arrow goes, you know, stage right. Um, but this network, if you think of that network diagram in your head, all those interconnecting nodes, um, very, very vibrant um, and ever-changing. So uh, it's not just uh, important for the military, it's uh, important for us. And just in case you're not scared enough, right, we can talk about not military action, um, but crime and how much money is lost. Uh, General Alexander, uh, if you read in the paper uh, recently, said the biggest transfer of wealth in the history of the world has been through cybercrime. So hundreds of billions, if not trillions uh, of dollars. So um, let me talk, uh, I've talked a little bit about your smartphone, your computer networks, and so uh, kind of laid down the space, right? So that's about it. You agree? No, no. If you go to downtown Boston and you park, what are you doing, right? Interacting with an electronic system, right? Infrared readers has your data, right? Guess what? I, sh I probably shouldn't, and I won't look at anybody particularly, uh, but the guys at Raytheon hacked the parking machine, right? You can get in. You can manipulate um, that data. You take a step back from there and you look at your cars, right? Your car today, if you've bought a car within the last five years, has 100 million lines of code in that car. The National Transportation Association actually uh, had a grant and they had two what we call white hats, right, legal hackers, go in and hack cars, right? They can be driven. If you've got OnStore, uh, you, you want to make sure you're cyber protected, right? So even in your car. So again, the nodes on the network expanding. Now here's the one that gets really scary. Have you ever thought about medical devices? Right? If you've seen the Homeland, if there's anyone that watches Homeland uh, uh, show, there's actually a, a uh, episode where the vice president's uh, pacemaker uh, got hacked. All right? Guess what? That, that really uh, can happen. Um, so... Uh, I just thought I'd have another quote from the FDA, uh, just to give a little humor. It says, there's been dozens of cyber uh, security incidents that have affected hundreds of medical devices, dot, 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 although no patients have been harmed. <laughs> I kind of wanted to put yet in parentheses uh, behind that. But uh, anyways, so very vast, uh, very complicated. Um, and it's not just high-tech firms, it's retail firms. Right? Um, anybody in the room in a pharmaceutical um, company? <coughs> nope. A hundred billion dollars a year um, is stolen from, from biotech firms, right? A 400% increase in the last two years.